1993, uh, 2019. That's right. Pre-COVID, which That's was really year. great. And then she she left us halfway through. She decided to be affected and decided to do music. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> a traitor. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And anyway, so then she went to San. She went to state. We did the program there and graduated. And now, and now she's been hired here. So it, I thought great to have her here. Come talk to you. You can ask her questions. And wait, you looking at yourself? No, I'm trying to talk uh, to you. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you because I'm mad at him. Uh, and so. <laughs> Composer, yes. pianist, teacher, uh, a very accomplished uh, person and awesome musician. And uh, let's see, oh, you got your master's degree. I did. Just uh, I finished that up last week. Congratulations. So inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, wow. Big deal. Also studied with Ben Sabi, who will yes. be here later today to talk about. He's, he's, he's the co-director of the music de music department, co-chair with. Steve or yeah, you know what? I don't know the titles very well, so I don't want to bungle okay. it. But yeah, he's he's our like our, our head of composition so far as I am aware. Yeah, and I got to study with him for about the last year, and that was just a total treat. So cool, awesome. Well, take it away, Alexa. yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me back. Yes, so I am a, a CSM graduate, as has already been covered. Um, I did both uh, courses here, so I did the the music AAT, and then I was doing the electronic music certificate. Yeah, but yes, that, that one I haven't finished, but it still served me very well. And actually, that, that leads right into this. So now that you are graduating the electronic music program, congrats, by the way, you finished all your classes, you did 290 to 293, you guys have done some incredible work, you guys have been in four concerts, you guys have done a ton, so you should feel very proud of yourself. Yay, yay, okay. And if that's not true for you right now, don't worry, it will be soon. Let me see if I can pop into here a slideshow and just move forward. Now, after we've gone through these four classes, you have a couple of options for your next steps. So maybe some of you still need to hang back here at CSM, finish up some general eds to finish the certificate. I was definitely in that camp for a while. I had a lot of the coursework done already, but I needed like a general ed before I could move on. So there was that. Maybe somebody, like some of you in this room are already done with that. You've checked up all your CSM boxes. You're going to go transfer. You already applied in November. You've been accepted. I think that's Tommy, right? You're already accepted to go somewhere in the fall. Yes. Yes, that's great. So that's in the middle. You can go anywhere. And then, of course, the next step after this is that you don't have to stay in school. You could do your own thing. But I can't really talk about those next steps because I am a chronic student. I have been in college for nine years. I don't know what the outside world looks like. Everything I know is on my transcript. So kind of kidding, kind of not. What's up, Tom? Uh, um, here we go. Another Tom has entered the battlefield. <laughs> So if you're continuing at CSM, may I just recommend a couple of things? Um, don't let anyone rush you out of the school. Before I was a music major, I was an accounting major, and I was definitely sitting with a counselor who was like, all right, you got your accounting, let's go, let's put you in San Jose State. And that was like 2017, 2018, and the feeling of dread, I just couldn't capture it. I knew I wasn't ready, so I didn't go. And I like to think that that decision worked out pretty well for me, because if I had let them rush me out of here, I would be in some cubicle being very, very miserable. You know, like the start of Stardew Valley. Uh, anyway, um, whilst you're here, if you're finishing up other things you have to do, please take more music classes. So I actually wasn't planning on taking any electronic music classes because I didn't, quote, meet them, right? They weren't part of my transfer plan, program, whatever, but I wanted to take them because I wanted to have these skills. Naturally, that worked out great. My most recent project, which is my thesis project for San Francisco State for my master's, used all of the skills that I learned in electronic music one, two, and the bit of four that I was able to take. No joke. So had I not taken these classes, I probably wouldn't be a composer, right? And again, these are classes that I didn't quote need at the time. So while you're here, please keep taking classes. If you're moving forward, that's also a great idea. If you're going to transfer and you're applying to transfer in the fall, you know that that's something that's coming up, please don't wait till the last minute. I did. It sucks. It's mostly data entry. If you have the AAT, just FYI, there are many more like totally, uh, what's the word, more qualified individuals to talk to you about that. Over uh, like building three, building four, there are people who, or uh, floor three, floor four of building 10, people who know how to transfer, get you out of here. I'm not one of those people, but I would say use all of that to your advantage. I get emails all the time about how many resources we have, so please, please use them. And then, if you're going out and doing your own thing, oh, sorry, if you're already transferring, right? So let's say you've already applied in November and you're, uh, you're, you're gearing up and, and like Tommy, like you're gonna start somewhere new in the fall. 
don't be shy about asking everybody everywhere questions, right? Meet all the people you're going to go interact with for the next two years. I did that and I found them particularly helpful. Um, if ever I had trouble, they knew my name, right? Like, because I met them first, they recognized my name, they're like, I remember that person, let's get this forward. Um, when you transfer, sometimes you're just a name and a number. So it's good to put a face to that name and number as soon as you can. And meet with your professors before you take your class. I met with Ben Safey before I took his classes and I'm really happy I did. Granted, I don't think it was that one meeting that changed like, ah oh, yes, I'm only going to study with this person, but like, it was nice to get that before I transferred, because transferring is a big, like, can be a big culture shock. So that's just a couple of things that were on my mind. If you're doing your own thing, school be darned, that's great. Apply to everything, do all the things. I don't really have wisdom for you past that, but I, I think that's fabulous. So, no matter what you're doing, if you're staying at CSM, if you're going to transfer, if you are, or if you are done with school entirely, please do the following. Let's set up a website for you and your music. How many of you already have a website? Like yourname.com at blah. Does a Spotify challenge? That's a great question. No. It's great that you have a Spotify, but it's not a website, and it's not a substitute for a website, and I'll talk about why. Okay, that's good. Um, game jams. I don't... So that's, that's making a video game in a short amount of time. Of course, I'm biased. I, video game is my interest. How many of you have participated in a game jam? Great, okay. And how many of you have social media pages that are more than just like, oh, here's an Instagram with me and my mom. Like, how many of you guys have like a, a social media page that's more or less dedicated to you as an artist and your craft? Okay, okay. So that's good. That's great. That's a great start. So let me just run you through the basics of a website. I, I feel like sometimes you hear like, oh, you should make a website, and it feels like dated advice, but I can promise you it really, really isn't. Um, a website is a quick place where somebody can see the whole picture of you. You have complete control over what somebody sees when they click on your website. It's not like Instagram where you get like one pinned post and whatever you had most recently for dinner, right? It's, it's you can highlight and display the things that you want people to see. Here's my most recent project. I did a rescoring of a film. Here's my most recent collaboration. I produced this track for a friend of mine. That sort of thing. So when I see the name Tom Yaniv, I'm like, oh, Tom Yaniv can do that thing. Great. It's a, it's a nice, succinct little package. Um, if I'm like, hey, you, or, you know, let me see your website, let me see your music, and you hand me a SoundCloud link, I immediately, what's the word? Distrust, dislike. Bad things. I don't like being handed a SoundCloud link. It does nothing for me. I don't know what you want me to see. I don't know where your music has been. But a website provides all that context, not just for your music, but for you as a person. So a website is where you're going to highlight the things about you, your life, your art, that you want people to see. Why am I so hell-bent on a website? Because it is quite literally the one thing that has gotten me what, 80% off? Okay, I'm not going to put a percentage on it, but I'm on two record labels. I wouldn't be on one if it weren't for the re website. I got a new job recently. I wouldn't have had that if not for the website. So we'll talk about all these things. They, they are quick, easy steps that you can take to just build your artistry a little further. What you're going to need to build a website, it's, I'm sure you could get this on a YouTube video too, but you need a quick website builder, unless you really want to learn HTML and CSS, you do you. You need a domain name, right? You need a content, any sort of content will do. Your music from this past two years will be great. And ideally a logo, something that I can look at and be like, ah oh, yeah, that's, that's Tommy, right? I can associate that with you. That's it. I know it seems really difficult and that web developer is a scary job and you're always being advertised like Wix and Squarespace, but let me boil it down to how I was able to do it. Wix and Squarespace will build, almost build the website for you, but they're a little pricey. It's like, oh, hello. <laughs> $15 a month, I think, which is just a little steep. You guys are just butting into this. I don't know that a $15 a month uh, expense is right for you where you are with your music, right? If you're not planning on getting at least $15 a month back, I don't know. I think it's, a, it's, it's an expense we can avoid, and they're a little bit limiting in their formatting options. I don't think it's a bad place to do it. I do have a friend who has a portfolio that we can look at, but it's, it's not what I used because I am a little on the inexpensive side. And I like Google Sites because it is free 99 and it's easy. So you guys have all used Google Docs, right? Google Sheets, Google Slides, right? Google Sites is the exact same thing. You just build a website with Google's tools. You can embed links, you can embed your YouTube, you can make your music clickable in the browser without making sure that it auto plays, which is nice because of course nobody likes a website that makes you listen to music without your consent. 
Um, and it can be linked to a personal domain, right? When we have a, a Google Sites, their default uh, URL is sites.google.com. That is not what you want to be. So if I'm like, Tommy me, what's your website? And you go, okay, get a pen and paper, sites.google.com slash Tom slash 899. We don't want that, right? So you can link it to a personal domain that you can buy. It also has limiting formatting options, but unless you're really hell-bent on one very specific aesthetic thing, probably not going to be a problem for you. So let's take a quick look at a couple of the portfolios. Here's a friend of mine that I met in graduate school. What do you see about her right away? Projects. Looks professional. Yes. Projects. Looks professional. Why? Why does it look professional? This is so organized. It's organized? What else? Pictures. Pictures. Yeah, nice pictures, right? Not cell phone camera <laughs> pictures, or if they are very well disguised, right? Um, what else about the organization? It's organized into categories, so like categories. people who are interested can see. Yeah. Oh, I like this person, and she does electroacoustic music. I don't really care about film and video games, but electroacoustic, that's interesting. Right? We can also see up on the top there, we've got external links to social media. Fabulous. And if I were to click into any one of her projects, I could pretty much hear music straight away. Oh, I picked one where you didn't, but that's okay. You gotta pick one. You pick, and you can play it, and you could hear her. It's really nice. This is a website powered by Squarespace. I think, yeah, here it is at the bottom. A perfectly nice website, and I like it a lot. I would even say, I would contend that it might be better than my own website. Now, I know I'm here, but what would you say, what, what can you see about me on this limited screen? We're gonna scroll down, but right now, what do you see about me? What do you know about me straight away? Your occupation. Yeah, absolutely, what else? Ooh, you started a studio? I did, yes I did. New studio. What else do we see? A logo. I got a logo, immediately, you see it in two places. Format is a little funky actually, maybe I should. Uh, see, and here's the thing about your own website, you will constantly edit it, it's a problem actually. Anyway, what else, what do you see on the top bar? Infinity stone colors. <laughs> do I? Where? Oh yeah, kind of. That's so funny. I didn't even think about that. Up at the top, you see that I've got a resume, right, and a link to my studio, video games, and concert music. Those are probably my focuses, right? Now I am an academic, right? That's a chronic student, so of course things like the resume, things like the academia and the school projects will show. Mine is a little bit more nested. If I click through my video games, you can see down here, whoops, that I've got a couple different places to see video games. You can hear my music straight away. I think my goal was on every page you could hear music. I could play something on every page. We're musicians, we want that. If it's your sound design, if it's your music, have something that it makes it not too clicky to go around. But that's, that's I can shore that up. Excuse me, Zoom, I need to get to my slide again. Okay, now that we've got kind of the idea of a website and why we should get one, buying a domain name is not nearly as hard as it sounds. You have to go to a domain name provider. Google has one by themselves. There's also one called GoDaddy, that's what I use. I don't like the name, but whatever. And it was really expensive. I think mine, I think when you Google it, actually, let's pick someone who wants to see if their domain name is available. Tom? Sure. TommyNeve.com. All right. Come right up. So you go to GoDaddy, domain names. We want the domain we want. Now, I'm not going to go to TommyNeve.com in the URL bar. This is a quick cybersecurity thing. My dad is a cybersecurity expert, so I, it's always on my mind. Um, don't go to a website that you've never gone to before. Check it through something like this first. You never know what's on the other end of the URL. So, TomYaniv.com. A penny for the first year of a two-year registration. Now, of course, there's going to be some other fees. I think my domain cost me 50 bucks for a two-year contract. So $25 a year, much less than the Squarespace subscription. Let me choose my own domain name. The one I had a problem is with my business. My business shares a name with other businesses, so we had to compromise on our .co, right, instead of .com. A little frustrating, but look at that. That's such a low bar of entry for such a high return, because if I want to know more about Tommy Deep, I just go to TommyDeep.com. Boom. And there is all this music. So we have a website builder, we have a website name. Now we just need a little bit of content. How do we make content? That is why you guys are all in this room, right? We already tried it. When you have content on a website, I want to know about you, the human being. I want to know about you, Tommy Neve, the person, right? Not just the collection of your work. Um, this always intimidates me. I really, I have a hard time writing biographies. They never feel right, they never feel right. Like, the thing that I want to say, I always feel like I'm bragging, I don't like that. But 
if you practice it enough times, which you practice it probably in a communications class or English 100, everyone's here has written a biography, um, you can start to kind of get a feel for it and, and get that discomfort out of the way and put a little something on your website that says what you are, what you're about, what do you want to do, and why should I bother listening to your music? You have to sell yourself just a little bit. Just a little. Now, a lot of you are thinking, I don't really want a website right now because I feel like I don't have the right material to put on it. I feel like I want to polish my work and make better work before I put it on a website. And does that sound about right? Anyone having that thought in their head? Yeah, right? I'm seeing some pretty serious thoughts. Yeah, forget about that, right? Not everybody is going to click every single link, right? So you can put your kind of okay work up there at the bottom, right? But at least it shows up like a link and it shows the amount of work that you've done. Of course, we want quality. That's the thing we highlight and display. That's the thing we want. But show your quantity. You guys have done so much work in these last two years. You guys rescored a video. You guys have done, I've heard some podcasts. I've heard some solo works, electroacoustic works. You have a ton to show the world. So just put it in a place where I can see that and get a sense of you. Let's see, and, and try to keep it all in, in your website. If you have any clicking to external links, don't link it to your SoundCloud. Embed your SoundCloud in the website so I can immediately hear you. For your personal work, if you've got anything personal, post it, right? I decided to write this theme song for my cat. I decided to write this piece because I was inspired by Satis from Napadi, and I wrote it in two minutes on, um, I don't know, a vacation in Malala. I don't care. Post it, right? Post it and talk about it. Talk a little bit about your artistry. Every time somebody clicks on your work and sees how you made it, they get to know a little bit more about you as an artist, and they see you future collaborator, future uh, composer for my game, you know, whatever it is, they get to know a little bit more about you than just your notes, which is exciting. Beyond that, how do you make more content? Okay, like I've done this music thing for a little while, I have this website, but I feel like the collection of things I have is a little measly, it's a little small, I want to make more content, but I have a hard time making music just for music's sake. So keep rescoring like you've done in Music 293. Take videos from YouTube, screen record them. You can use OBS software to take a nice high quality capture of YouTube. Yeah, yeah, the baby you're streaming. Um, and rescore those, right? It doesn't have to be much, it doesn't have to be entirely. You can do the sound design or the music or both, whatever. You feel like something in your free time. But, uh, oh, and there's some social music challenges on social media, like Instagram and Twitter will sometimes have a, a music writing challenge, album writing club month, that kind of thing. So you can hunt those down. But I really, I'm gonna sell you, hopefully, I'm gonna sell you, I'm trying a game jam. So remind me, none of you guys have done a game jam before, right? Yes, okay. I did not know what a game jam was before 2020. I did not think that I should participate in one, but oh my gosh, it has been the single coolest thing, and it's totally pivoted, actually I would say my career, or at least my career goals. Game jams are incredible, and what they are, is a teeny tiny, often competitive environment where you make a small game from scratch in the window of about a weekend, right? It starts at Friday at noon, it ends Monday at noon. You have only that time to make something complete and total. And it is difficult, and it is fun, and you don't sleep, and it's ridiculous. And it's a great creative endeavor, regardless of if you like video games. Out of curiosity, anyone here who does not like, play, like video games, they don't like to play them, <laughs> Don't put your finger in me. Oh, I'm what sorry. I didn't mean to open this can of worms. <laughs> Violence is inciting. I'm going to go with everybody likes video games to an extent, right? Yes. I don't know if you guys are aware, but video game uh, development is becoming so ridiculously accessible. You all can download Unity, FMOD, Blender for free and try them for free and make your own game for free right now. All you need is a PC that can handle it. That's it. All of you can do that in this room right now. That's huge. Because what do we think of when we think of video games, at least in this room? We think of music, right? Kratos, yeah, boy. Okay, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I tried. Well, <laughs> um, well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well done. Yes, thank you. We think of the classic themes from 1986. If I tell you something about Mario, right, all you'll hear is the chip tunes, right? So video game music is a fabulous way to make some quick, quick content. And this, oh, okay, let me just go bit by bit. I have this all organized. Why would I do this if I even don't want to write video game music? Well, it forces you to do things that you don't usually have to do otherwise. It forces you to work on a teeny tiny deadline, and you will learn a lot about yourself in that short amount of time. I thought I was pretty savvy with my job before I did the game jam. No, 
Uh, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm decent, but not under the gun. I had to learn some tricks to go really quickly. I have almost all the logic hotkeys memorized now. Uh, <laughs> it really forces you to work under the gun and still make something quality. Um, it immediately, oh, sorry, it immediately involves you with the community. Music doesn't happen in a vacuum, right? We can make music for ourselves, and I, I'm sure a lot of us do. We noodle, we're in the studio, we're by ourselves, that's fine, right? But truthfully, we need somebody else to listen to our music more times than not, right? And this is a great way to get your music in the hands of somebody right away. And it's also a really good exercise in, in exercising your ability to make music for what is needed, not music for what you want. And I found that a little bit tricky at first. We have a lot of uh, freedom and liberty here in our, in our assignments. Even though we have to do one specific thing and we have a goal, we can basically take any road that we want to get there, right? But in this game jam, I have handed somebody a piece of music and just said, Justin, what do you think of my music? They're like, actually, we need you to change it. And it's like, oh, okay, right? <laughs> we don't usually get that. So this is a great way to practice handling that, and now I love it. I love when I hand somebody a piece of music and they're like, change it. I'm like, yes, absolutely, right? It's a great creative flow that this will force you to be in. As well, it enables you to pick up some new skills. I mentioned a couple of game development softwares. Those are all ones, with the exception of Blender, that I know now how to use a little bit better from Game Jams and, of course, from the SF State program that Dr. Sandy will talk about. Um, Hands-on experience in putting music into something that isn't a music-based software. Putting music into a video game, putting music into, I don't know, uh, Adobe, right, or uh, Premiere, if you're working for somebody's video editing, for example. That's a great skill to have and to be able to take ownership of that as well. And we talked about your portfolio, making content. These things are content machines. Every time I finish a game, a, 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 a game, it's on the website, on the website, just immediately on YouTube, on the website. It has, I have a lot of tracks mostly from these. So game jams are hosted by different people or groups with a common theme. So your theme might be, uh, it's a dinosaur game jam, right? So you have to make your game that is some way related to dinosaurs. But it might not be about dinosaurs, maybe it's about like our Congress, right? Like things like this, right? <laughs> we, can, we can have that idea. Maybe you have a, develop, uh, a theme where it's like uh, time can only move backwards, right? You can only move backwards through time. So generally those are things dedicated to these software developers that are like, oh my gosh, I have to deal with this whole thing, I have to deal with physics, I have to deal with time. A constraint on the developers, but of course that's a constraint on you and that's great. Creativity comes from confines, right? Being constrained both by time and by theme will force you to make a lot of music that you might not have made otherwise, and I think that's a fabulous exercise. Even if you're not interested in the end product of the game, for you, selfishly, just do it, right? Um, you guys develop a game as a team. Often this will kind of happen. Music tends to be the afterthought. I got really lucky with my teams where we were like four sound designers and composers on a team overpowering one very sad software developer. Uh, <laughs> so it was all sound based, but um, I've also worked with a team where they're like, hey, can you get us a 30 second loop? And I said yes, and then we really didn't talk much after that. So it can be in any sort of way. Um, you also are going to compete with other teams. So generally these are competitive, not always for a cash prize, actually I should say not often for a cash prize. Some of them are sponsored and funded, but usually you just want the highest rating. Like, I had the most fun game, I had the best place in audio, that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's the, uh, the dopamine that we get from social media, but in the context of a game jam. Um, do with that information what you will. How are you going to do it? Well, you do need to make sure that you can do this at home, right? Regrettably, you can't come to Studio B and work at 3 in the morning. I do my best game jam work at 3 in the morning, so I needed a space that, that is right for me. I needed my, my studio monitors, my computer, whatever I needed for making music, I had to have it at home. I recommended Discord. Is everybody on Discord? Gamers? Yeah, kind of. Discord's a little weird, I know. It's a little awkward, but this Keep is obviously... Hacked. What's up? You getting hacked on Discord. I have a weird thing on my account too. I don't know what's going on with that. So maybe they're going through some security woes. But anyway, um, you gotta have a Discord profile to find your team, connect with your team, talk to your team. We almost exclusively talk through Discord. Um, I was working with a sample from with a team a team from Singapore. So we were 12 hours disparate, and that was really difficult because it was like mid afternoon for them, while it was midnight for me. It was like, oh my god. Um, yeah, it, that was a tough sleep cycle. But uh, we all chatted through Discord as if they were next door. It was fabulous. Um, the internet, right? Also, just know how to Google things. If you don't know how to do something, know how to figure it out. Um, that would be probably one of the highest uh, recommended skills for a game jam beyond just making music. How do you find them? So there's something called itch.io. It's not itch.io, it's itch.io. 
Uh, they have a calendar with basically daily game jams. There hasn't been a day that I've seen that doesn't have a jam on it, even if it's hosted by just one person and it's not really big, and there are five participants, that's still a jam. Um, they are the most popular game jam hosting site. There's also Ludumiare, that happens two or three times a year. That's a big one. That one's been going on for 20 years. That was the one I started with in 2021. Um, that one has like thousands of uh, participants every time. So the competition is high, but that means you have a lot of software developers who need a lot of music. So you can just jump into those communities and say, hello, yes, I'd like to make your music. And generally, you'll get scooped up. Um, we also have the Game Makers Toolkit, Brackies, Global Game Jam, organizations that put these on that are game developer focused. Those also have a big pull like Lumidare. So you go onto their community boards, you're bound to find somebody who is in need of music. And I think I mentioned on the next slide that you should also do Discord. Yeah, also if you forget but all you remember is that it's a game jam, just Google it. Game jams and itch.io pops up first. You can see I visited it. Itch.io is a place where you can find your teams as well. So every time they host a jam, come participate in this jam, you've got a little community board and a forum. Often you'll see people posting like, hi, I'm an artist, I need a team. Hi, I'm a composer, I need a team. Be one of those, they usually get scooped up. Sometimes last minute, but it works out. Um, and then your Discord is also a place where you can hop into servers that are game jam dedicated. And you can find your team in chat way. You can also find them on Reddit. I found my favorite programmer on Reddit, which is weird, because um, Reddit, I don't think of it as like social media, it's like anti-social media, but I posted on r slash I made a team, I at, and uh, even though it wasn't very active, he happened to respond to my post, and now we're friends. Um, so it's, it's kind of cool. Now, what if you do a game jam, you do a terrible job, and your team hates you? Whatever, man, they're internet strangers. Who cares? Do the next one the next weekend, right? Don't feel like, don't take yourself out of the running because you feel like you might not be able to keep up with these guys, these software programmers. They assume risk when they take you onto their team. So if they're mad at you, that's their fault, right? If they wanted a high, polished, 10 year composer and they have someone who's never done a game jam before in their life, that's completely on them. So don't worry about that. Do the best you can. It's going to be great. I've had some bad game jams, I'll say that, but absolutely. But I still went back out and did it again, and then I had a really good game jam. So it's it's just a really good way for you to hone your creative process. And I know that I keep talking about it in the context of video games, but truly I think it makes us a better musician. And if you're thinking about what to do with electronic music next, and you still want that kind of rigor, that, that combination of things that you get in an academic setting, like deadlines and targets and goals, if you need those things, this is a great place to find them and to get a lot of reward for your own website, for your own portfolio. Okay, this last one, I don't like it, I like to talk about it, I don't like social media, I just don't, I don't know what it is, I've never been a cool kid, right, it's just, there's something about it that's just fundamentally icky to me, and then the weirdness of it, right, we can go into like the psychological effects of social media, I'm sure, I am a holdout, I still don't have a TikTok, and I will, I will be damned if I get a TikTok. The hardest yes. choices require the strongest wills. That's what I'm <laughs> saying, yes, precisely, yes, well said, but, as much as I complain about social media, I know it sucks, but Twitter got me on a record label. I hate to say that, but it's true. Uh, <laughs> I, I got a cold call from a gentleman in the UK who was among one of the nicest people ever. He said, I looked at your website, ah, website, right? He said, I looked at your website, I really like your music, do you want to write a 40 minute album for me? I was like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely I do. He reached out to me in November, so I was just, as my first semester teaching CSM, I thought it was my last semester in my graduate program, it wasn't, and I had like all these things, so I had to reach out to him and be like, um, yes, but can we, you know, and, and so I'm gonna release mine in August, so that's really exciting. Reddit, as I mentioned, that's where I found a game developer. Who knew? Uh, LinkedIn, I got, got me my most recent W2 job, as I like to call it. I teach at the California Conservatory in Redwood City, and it's a great job. It, it's musical, it pays the bills, and it has taxes. It's not freelance work, which means that I, my W2, my taxes, it's all covered, um, which is really nice because I've been freelancing for a while, and those taxes suck. So this is really great. <laughs> it was just because my LinkedIn was up to date. They could look at my LinkedIn and see like who I am, what I've been doing, all the jobs that I've had. They saw that I had a ton of teaching experience from like when I was a kid all the way through college, that I had collegiate experience. So they offered me the interview over LinkedIn and then basically within 10 minutes of the interview I got the job. So that's, but if I didn't have LinkedIn, that wouldn't have happened. I didn't even know the school existed and it's only like seven miles from my house. So just things to keep in mind. 
and Discord. Discord is great. Discord is overwhelming. Discord is frustrating. I've said three things that really don't feel like they go together, but it's true. Um, Discord is a place where you can find servers of like-minded people who want to do the same things you do. I'm in a bunch of servers for video game music. There are surely uh, servers full of people who want to do movies, who want to do podcasts, who are just musicians out in the world doing their own thing on stage performances, that kind of thing. You can find your, your crew on Discord, which is really nice. And as I mentioned, if you want to do game jams, collaborations, that kind of thing. And these are all just the things that it's done for me. Like, what if I had a cool Instagram? Who knows, right? And so these are, and these are just anecdotal things. There's a, a really common saying, I'm sure you all have heard it, it's where luck meet, uh, luck is where opportunity and preparation meet. I can't tell you about opportunity, I don't know how those things happen, but I do know that I was prepared every time that somebody came to me and offered me a, a thought, an idea, a job, a gig, I was prepared with all of the things that I've showed you. I had my website put together, my website had my portfolio, my social media was up to date, and I was decently active on it. That all happened to work out for me, so hello, there's Ben Sandy. So as much as I despise social media, it could open doors, it can be a fun experience, and it will get your name into other people's uh, consciousness that wouldn't be otherwise, right? Um, I don't know how the algorithm works, but I know that I would never have met this person in the UK if not for this social media platform. So just a quick uh, accommodation for that. Really quickly, a couple of things I thought about while social media. Uh, things you should do, just be a decent person, right? Don't, don't be dingus, um, don't be mean, right? And have your identity clearly in your bio. If you're a composer, say you're a composer, not an aspiring composer, just a composer, sound designer, producer. Put whatever you are in the bio right away because for most social media platforms, it just says your name in your bio. And that's why somebody can look at you and say, Tom and Eve, electronic musician, right? Or, or, or whatever you want to identify as that day. Um, avoid, avoid being mean, avoid the word aspiring. You are a composer, you are a musician, you're not aspiring, you've done two years, you've earned it, right? Um, you've paid your dues, and so I think you should just be, be confident in stating that. Um, of course, with social media, make sure everything leads back to that website that we talked about earlier. You and the entire package visible in one succinct URL. Whatever you're going to do, you guys are going to be great. So I'm really excited for you. Thank you for having me. And I'm excited to see everybody's websites, right? Because everybody's going to go home and make one. Yes? Great. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, great to be here. Great Thank to see you, you so again. Much. It's been a long time. Uh, great to see you, Alexa. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I teach at SF State. I, I head the composition, uh, game scoring, film scoring, electronic music areas. Um, what do you guys do? Are you guys composers, sound designers, electronic musicians? All of it. Yeah? <laughs> We're all of it. <laughs> How many of you? Uh, do, Consider yourselves like uh, producers, like you make beats and you use samples and a DAW. How many of you would consider yourself more of a composer? You write music on paper maybe and give it to someone to play? Okay, cool. Um, recording engineers? There's a lot of waving hands. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. No, I like that because at SF State, and the SF State Composition Studio envisions a world of art without boundaries or borders. It's very uh, flowery language. Yeah, um, all music, whether it's intended for a game, the screen, the concert hall, has the same basis in invention and creativity. I think I wrote that a few years ago. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have lots of programs where, where we do lots of stuff. and. Um, if you are interested in writing music for the concert hall and you just want to come up with esoteric ideas and write them on paper and hand them to a musician and perform it, you can do that. And we have a, so we have a, we have a bachelor of music degree in uh, composition. And uh, within that degree path you can do concert music or you can do film scoring or game scoring um, or electronic music production or all of the above. So we are all in the same studio, we don't break out film composers go over there, and serious concert music composers are over here, but it's all together. Um, so yeah, I like the fact that you guys are 
um, doing a little bit of everything, or, or, or a lot of everything. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's an exciting place to be. We have uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of young composers, a lot of good energy. Uh, we bring in a lot of professionals from the industry to come in and give talks regularly. We um, hire professional ensembles to come work with us. We just had a the Friction Quartet is a very good uh, local professional string quartet that came in and uh, did a whole recording session with our composers who are doing the um, Scoring for Games course. And um, so they recorded all the tracks and then put, brought that into a DAW and then together with electronic instruments, MIDI, and also produced tracks. Um, the project for that is called The Music Maze. And uh, the way that works is uh, it's a pre-made game. My colleague Steve Horowitz, uh, actually let me, let me introduce you to Steve Horowitz really quick. Uh, this is Steve right here. And this is the Alexander String Quartet, our quartet that's sort of still in residence still. <laughs> um, and this is our old studio. We are not in this space anymore. We're actually in a much better space. This is a cool picture, right? Looks exciting. Lots of exciting, fun toys. So imagine that times like three or four. And that's, what, <laughs> that's what we have. Um, Steve Horowitz is uh, my colleague who is a wonderful person, a lovely individual, a wonderful teacher. Students love working with him. Um, he is the audio director for Nickelodeon Digital. Um, he scored a film called Super Size Me, which was nominated for an Academy Award. Anybody seen that movie? Yeah. Um, and he knows everyone, <laughs> basically. He basically knows everyone in the, in the world of game scoring and film scoring. Um, and uh, if, you, if you're interested in a career in games or film, he's the guy to know. And we're so lucky to have him. He, he and I, well, uh, he, mostly he, developed this entire new, uh, well, it's actually not that new anymore, but this entire program in Game and Film School. So um, uh, he wrote a textbook about it. Um, and uh, one of the things he's done is he made this thing called the, the Music Maze. And it's a pre-made game where the person playing the game uh, goes into a maze. And then um, if you are going the right direction, the music guides you in the right direction. And if you're going the wrong direction, the music is supposed to change and let you know somehow that you're not going the right direction. So um, as a composer, you get to decide like how, how are you going to communicate with the person playing the game um, how the game is supposed to work. So uh, it's a game in which music is a central feature of it. And as the composer, you have to grapple with you know, how do you do that. And, and we've had dozens of students do that project, and everybody comes up with a slightly different approach to it. Um, but it's really interesting to think about, um, yeah, how, how is music affecting a person playing a game? Uh, but also that music in a game is non-linear, right? So when you write music for a concert hall, it has a beginning and it goes through the piece and it ends, and hopefully all the correct notes are played in the right order and at the right time. But in a game, when you're making music for a game, the person playing the game can do any number of things that you as the composer might, that you can't predict, right? And so how do you make music that is adaptable like that and interactive like that and that doesn't follow a linear path, right? So that's, anyway, that's, that's one of the, the big fun projects that our students do. Um, and just last week, I went to the, to the final class where, uh, where all those projects came together, and I got to be the person playing the game, and and try, and then critiquing the students as to whether they did it well or not, um, and that was a lot of fun. So that's something we do every year about this time. So um, yeah, we also have film scoring. So um, at SF State we have a uh, computer science department, and that department has a game design course. So our students actually get a chance to, every year we do a collab where our uh, students actually work with student game designers on the game that they're working on. 
And we also have a, a school of cinema at SF State, and it's, um, I believe it's the only film school in Northern California, if I'm not mistaken, and it's listed in the top 15 film schools in the country. Um, and so there, and it's a big program, there are a lot of student filmmakers there making films, and they have always uh, been looking for composers to work with, um, but since Steve and I have built this program, it's sort of built into our curriculum now. So, um, yes, yeah, so students work with film, filmmakers, and also just last week I went to the final screening of all the films, and it was really fascinating to see all the different short films and the music in them, and how some of it worked really well, and some of it didn't work quite well enough, and, and uh, you know, it's a big learning process, but, um, there are lots of people to collaborate with there. because so we have all the game, uh, all the, yeah, the game design and film programs. So uh, one thing I always tell my students is that to make a career as a composer or, or film or game score, you have to uh, work really hard, you have to develop your craft, you have to try lots of times and fail lots of times, and you have to have a network. You have to know people and people need to know you. And the, one of the best ways to do that is to uh, work with fellow students because there are people in the cinema department at SF State who are gonna go off and have careers as, as filmmakers. And if you work with them, then uh, as, they, as their career develops, they take you along with them. Um, so all those connections are really important and they're all right there for whoever is, uh, wants to develop them, and it does take uh, getting out of your comfort zone, it takes getting out of your shell. Um, musicians often tend to be, especially composers, tend to be a little bit introverted, <laughs> like myself, so it's a challenge, but that's that's why we have a program there, and we kind of force, force that interaction so that you can kind of get over that hump and, and get into the habit of um, meeting people and making connections and building that work network. Um, if you like to make beats and stuff, <laughs> uh, we also have um, we have that as well, electronic music, and uh, we have been working for some time with a guy named Liam Shai, who has played at Coachella, and um, he has an event production business that puts on events at. Levi Stadium, and he just finished his um, law degree. He's actually a practicing attorney now, so um, uh, he knows all about the music, uh, music business, um, copyright law, all that kind of stuff. So he teaches some of our classes as well, if that's what you're interested in. Um, and I've been trying for eight years to get, to get a concentration in electronic music production, and I think. We might be able to get that finally together. All the courses are already there. It's just not packaged into a nice uh, degree program where it's easy for students to navigate. But, um, but we also have a program on campus called BECA, which stands for Broadcast Electronic Communication Arts. Have you guys heard of that? BECA? Um, so it's a program that uh, does like sports broadcasting and TV, like sound design for TV and um, all kinds of broadcasting things. Um, but they also have a uh, recording engineering program. So uh, you can take courses in recording engineering and mixing and mastering and that kind of stuff. And then we also have uh, electronic music production classes. So Liam is an Ableton certified instructor. Anybody here use Ableton? Do you know uh, about Ableton certified instructors? Do you know how many there are in the state of California? There's like four, I think, in the entire state of California. And Liam is one of them. So, um, uh, so we have courses in electronic music production, um, and then also the, the technical side of recording engineering, mixing and mastering, all that stuff. So um, if you do our Bachelor of Arts degree with the, through the electives, you can take all those courses. Um, and soon we'll have it as its own standalone degree where all the courses are already there, but they'll just be packaged nice and neatly that way. So, um, yeah, uh, we have uh, lots of performers around. We have an orchestra and wind ensemble that you are welcome to write for. Our 
uh, ensemble director Brad Hogarth is amazing. He loves working with composers, and he doesn't just say it, but he actually does it. Like, he will actually work with you and get a chamber ensemble together for you, or if you want to write a piece for the entire orchestra, you can do that. And our students, it takes a lot of work and planning, but our students absolutely do that. And uh, we had one of our uh, recent master students, Josh, wrote, I think, a 20-minute long orchestra piece or something that was performed on a concert just a couple weeks ago. So uh, we have choirs. We have a great Afro-Cuban ensemble. We have jazz ensembles, um, jazz combos, uh, all kind of stuff. It's like the most amazing place in the world. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's a bit of an overview of what we have going on there. Um, any questions? But we have lots of other stuff. We got modes and Eurorack stuff. And um, yeah, we have a beautiful, uh, well, beautiful, it's in a really old building, but it's a really cool space. Uh, it's kind of in a basement, so it's like our secret clubhouse. Of, uh, it's a full, a full recording studio. Um, which yeah, we we need to we need to update our website. I could I could pull up some pictures of it maybe, but um, it's got a control room that sort of sits above, and you look out on the on a pretty big uh, space for recording, and there's Steinway full fully size a full size Steinway in that space. Um, we have a 7.1 surround system in there. Uh, we are working with Dolby. We we do a lot of stuff with Dolby. And uh, we've been trying for a little while to get an Atmos uh, system installed, which would give us um, surround on the, on, on the two-dimensional level and then also overhead as well. So we could work in a completely submersive surround using the Dolby Atmos uh, system. Um, we had, uh, a little while ago, we worked with an ensemble uh, from Chicago called Fifth House. And we did a partnership with them and Dolby, and the Dolby Atmos, which everybody knows now, like it's on Apple Music and stuff, it, before it was even a thing, like before it was released, we were using that stuff. And our students did a project where they wrote a piece for this ensemble and then took the recordings of that and then mixed it in this 7.4.1 uh, system. Um, that was all during the pandemic, so it was all the lockdown stuff. But, um, any any questions? Yeah. I mean, it's not really a question, or at least not formed as a question in my head. But I mean, my track is a little bit different. Uh, so I'm actually looking at grad schools right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, like, uh, yeah, I don't have a fully formed question. It's just we do know, have a master's program yeah. at SF State. Yeah. yeah, Alexa just finished our master's program. She. Uh, did the bachelor's in piano performance and then yes. did the master's in composition. Yeah, and I have every intention of going to SF State just starting as a composer because I was like enthralled with the electronic music that I had just done here and wanted more of that. Um, the one I went to do the piano audition, I was otherwise compelled. Um, they, they suggested that I did piano and I said, what the heck, surely that's a great idea. And that was right before the pandemic. It was not a great idea, but that's okay. It's still a good program. Piano program's great. But yeah, I, the, the master's in composition, all of those things that Dr. Savy just illuminated. Working with Brad, I did that, or the ensemble. I got a premiere of a, of a piece last May and it was fabulous. It's one of the things on my website. Um, the, the master's program was great because, you know, after you do the, uh, the requisite stuff in your bachelor's, it feels like you really get to embrace your art as a master. You really get to work on the things that you want to, but still with, with like in the context of academia, still being pushed outside of your envelope. And it, it's, it's a great synthesis of, of the two worlds. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's no PhD program? No. no. I think there are many doctoral programs at California, California State University. Mm -hmm. um, but I have former students uh, who went to uh, Berkeley and um, UC Berkeley and uh, University of Buffalo and uh, Forest just got into yeah. UC Santa Cruz. Yeah. Um, uh, Brendan is uh, UC Davis okay. working with Kurt Rohde. Uh, do you know Kurt Rohde? He's mm -hmm. an amazing composer. I love that guy. So um, yeah, so we have a good track record of placing our master students in uh, good doctoral programs in California and elsewhere. So, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you, you're just oh, talking yeah. about websites, right? Yeah, so, so let's see how navigable mine is, actually. Right.
And so her, um, Alexa's uh, master's uh, creative work project is yes. this thing. This game does not exist yet. Yes, yeah. Um, do you want me to just sure. give a quick spiel? So this is part of the embedding that I was talking about, by the way. So it was posted to SoundCloud, but it's not actually sound. It's just it's in the website. But basically, I took uh, ideas of video games that don't exist, ideas of video games that I wrote, like, I would like to play this game. I think this game could exist. And I wrote a series of themes for them. Originally, I wanted to do everything. I mentioned how accessible it was. I wanted to do programming. I wanted to do art. And that was just like way like yeah. too big scope. So maybe for a, a doctor one day. But but for now, yeah. So um, there's like I think five different video games, all, all, each with a different synopsis. And just on hearing alone, hopefully you'll be able to get a sense of the genre and the style that I was thinking. Um, but yeah, it's about 30 minutes of music altogether um, in, in various video game styles, different genres, different orchestrations, uh, but all built in logic, actually. So uh -huh. the very thing you guys are learning how to do is, is can you all this? Yeah, so what's, this is a very impressive project. What's Thanks. great about it is that it's so diverse, so you can <laughs>
okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to use this yeah. in my future presentation. <laughs> Straight out of CSM. Yeah. yeah. It's from CSM State. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for having me. Um, thank you for coming. Yeah.